Hello, my name is Niles Ned. I'm a current student pursuing their AP certification at NAA New England. I'm the former student council president with a GPA of 4.0, a great percentage over summa cum laude at a 99.28. I've taken the general exam and currently have the highest grade out of my class at a 93%. These are the tips that I would use knowing what I know now on how to get 100. I'm gonna be breaking this down into four sections. What I did, what I learned, what I would do to improve my score, and then what not to do. All right, so let's get into it. What I did, I use an app called Prepware and don't just jump to go buy it. I'm gonna talk about a free study app that you could use shortly. What I did was organize them from smallest to largest, and then I did the smallest ones first, and then I would only move forward if I got 100 out of that section. And then once I moved forward to another section, I would go back and get 100, and then I would move forward again. And I would continue that process until I went all the way through to the largest section. And doing it in that order will allow you to take the exams on Prepware, and you'll see your progress get better a little by little until you can get a 90 and then a 100. On the exams, the subjects are divided. So every bit you get better will get you a higher percentage when you get to the actual exam. Once I completed every subject, I didn't move forward to actually take my federal exam until I got three 90s in a row consecutively. And then I booked my exam and took it confidently. What I learned from the actual exam once I took it about 65 to 70% of my exam was the questions on prepware. So if I wasn't getting a 90 or 100 while studying, I wasn't gonna pass that exam, basically is what I'm saying. Another big thing I learned in the exam is that a lot of it is process of elimination. Um, like I said, I felt confident in about 70% of the exam, but the rest of the exam, I was able to use my knowledge that I gained in school to eliminate the answers that I knew were completely incorrect in the questions. For example, if I show you three bolts and one of them is standard and the other one is standard corrosion resistant, and then I ask you which one is close tolerance, you know the first two, and but you might not know the third. You know what the third is the answer. So if you're studying and you know what a standard bolt looks like, and you might know what a standard resistance bolt looks like. So you know those two. Prep Boyer might've taught you that or one of the studying guides you use. And then on the actual exam, it might show you a picture of three things and then you'll see those two and then it might ask you what does a closed tolerance bolt look like you might not know what that looks like but you know it's not those other two and that's how i answered and got a 93 and use process of elimination to get a higher score in the exam it's going to be exactly like that you're going to have to apply the information that you've learned and answer the questions through what you've learned and how to find the actual answer and on that note i just want to say that the figures are also all exactly the same. The figures are provided to you by the FAA. You might have seen them in Prepware or Airframe Test or another app that you use to study. Um, and I just wanna say that they are all the same. Um, and this isn't like exclusive knowledge. They're, they're federal figures that they give and they provide to students. And you can actually find these um, free. There's a link down below of a free source, free PDF of how to, of figures for you if you would like them. That is actually really outdated. So I provided another link, it's an Amazon link, it's affiliate link, um, where you could find the 2025 examples of the FAA figures. I'm gonna come back to what I learned, but now we're gonna jump into what I would do to improve my score. Now, from what I was saying before, uh, Prepware is what I use, but it does cost money, it's $10. Um, and you might be saying, oh, it's just $10, but there's actually a free resource that is just like Prepware. And then honestly, in my opinion, I think it's better I've been using it more now. It changes the order of the multiple choice questions. So you're not memorizing a lot of it. It also retests you on those questions that you failed. So you can have a section of just failed questions if you would like to redo those. And you can also make custom exams with whatever subject you'd like. This website is called airframetest.com. So let's say on Prepware, you're studying all general. On airframetest.com, you can separate it and you can use different sections that you feel weekend and you can study them all at the same time, make your own exams, and I don't know, you have more freedom, and I, and I really like that about that website. So I prefer that, and if you're new to this, I would not recommend you just straight up buy Prepware. There are free resources. I remember when I started school, I was really upset that there was a study aid that I'd have to spend money on when I'm already spending money to be in school. So it, there is a, a free website, and I would recommend you use it. Another tip I would give, if you're using those study aids like Prepware and airmentest.com, I would look at the sections that are smaller. Like I was saying before, there are smaller sections like human factors is like six questions. I would look at that and realize that 
there's a lot more than just six questions that you can ask about human factors. Um, that section alone is it's not a tiny section. There's a couple pages. I would go through and read that. Obviously, you're going to expose yourself to more questions that you probably weren't going to see if you're just studying prepware. I mean, you should already be studying your book, but if you're not, I definitely recommend at least go through and read the smaller sections that don't have as many questions as like electricity that's like a hundred and something. But yeah, there are a lot of people in my class specifically that got stuck up on human factor questions that were seem, you know, easy, but they, they weren't as easy. So I definitely check up on that. And if you don't have an 8083 for some reason, I'm going to link a free one down below. Um, again, this is an outdated one. That's why it's a free PDF. If you want to buy your own, there's a link, another link down below. And then another tip I would say is to use other study aids like Sky Prep. I was gifted these by some upper terms. And this is the airframe one um, because I'm studying for airframe right now. But I would definitely recommend just exposing yourself to different questions because it'll make you realize things and learn a little bit more about the subjects than just using prepware or airmantest.com. Exposure is the best way to learn. Yeah, exposure to as many comp sites as possible. Down below, there's a link to Sky Prep on Amazon. There's another study aid that people use, which is ASA. Uh, they're textbooks people buy a lot. I personally don't recommend those books only because ASA creates prepware. So if you have airmantest.com or you have prepware, they're the exact same questions. They do have orals and practicals, which are different because you don't get that from Airman Test or Prepware. But if you're just going to be studying, I wouldn't recommend buying it. Unless you're a visual learner and you like to have a physical copy of things, I wouldn't recommend buying the book just because you already have it and there's a free version online at airmantest.com. Unless you need your O's and P's, which then I would say just get Sky Prep. These books are really cool. They also include a, a link to a free test. They have tests on here online um, that you can use as well. And then if you need a physical copy of the ASA textbook, again, there's a link down below if, if you need it. All right, now we're gonna get into what not to do. Okay, so what not to do. Don't take this test lightly. Like I said, my grades are amazing. I have I almost always like 75% get 100 on my exams. And um, I got only three on my FAA general, which I thought, you know, I, I came into a, a lot more confident than I was going to get. When I got a 93, I was pretty disappointed. Yeah, I would take this very, very, very serious, especially if you're not a student that gets 90s and 100 in, in class. It's a difficult exam. It is not the easiest. And I would take that very, very serious. To give a reference of how I felt before I took my general exam, I felt like I could be the teacher for general. Like that general subject, I feel like I could be the teacher. Like I felt so ready. I studied so hard. I knew a lot. So yeah, that's how you should feel. You should feel the most confident you felt at school before your general. If you're taking your general after school, you should feel very confident in yourself. Hey, now it's from the future here. I know I'm saying it's a very difficult exam, but I don't mean to stress you out at all. Um, I'm just saying it so you take it serious. And if you're here, you're already probably taking it very serious. You got this. My second tip, um, of what not to do. Do not skip math. Math is math. And I looked at it that way. Like, oh, I know math. I have a calculator. Calculator does most of the work. Do not skip math. Luckily, I didn't skip the math at the very last second. I studied right before the exam because I was like, oh, what if there's a question about piston displacement and I don't know the formula? And I panicked a little bit. So I ran over the math. Luckily, I did because there's basic questions like, oh, what's the area of a triangle? If you don't remember how to do that, you're gonna feel so embarrassed when you get that wrong. There might be some basic math questions, there might be some harder ones, but definitely do not skip the math. Half of my test I felt like was math. Like maybe it's just because I didn't feel that confident in it, but I felt like so much of my test was math and I, I don't want anyone else to feel that like upset or insecure about their passing rate just because there's a lot of math. Definitely study math. Another piece of advice I would give is do not aim for a passing score. The passing score is a 70. From what I've seen from my class, people get at least seven to 15 points less than what they aim for. The thing for me is, is aim for the stars, land on the moon. Like that's you should always take tests. You should always take school that serious. You should always shoot for that goal because that's usually what a case. I'm, I mean, I try to shoot for the stars and land on the stars, but that's not always the case. I aim for a hundred, I got a 93. A lot of people aim for hundreds. Some of them got 80s. You know, I, I, everyone that I saw that aimed for a 70 did not pass. And I'm 
being super serious, like no one passed that aim for a 70. So definitely do not shoot for that goal. You will miss it. And that will be sad and you have to pay money and take it again. And you'll feel very uh, embarrassed and, and not great. So don't, don't even do that to yourself. Aim for 100. Even if you've never aimed for 100 before, do that, please. That'll, that'll bring you a lot of peace. And if you get in the habit of aiming for the stars um, and you know landing on the moon, that's gonna help you in the long run. At the end of the day, the more you study, the more you know, the more you know, the more you're useful, the more you're useful, the more you get paid. Whether you're someone that's just into aviation because they're interested in it or they wanna get paid a lot, it benefits you the most to study hard because you'll learn more and you'll make more. Do us all the favor and stop this 70% is named P thing. Because at the end of the day, would you trust someone that says, I'm 70% sure I could fix your plane. That's how I'm feeling. Would you trust me? No. At the end of the day, people's lives are in our hands as technicians. So with that being said, I'm gonna include a fact about human factors. If you haven't gotten to the section already, 80% of errors are due to mechanics. Here I'm gonna include the safety creed, which is something that we have to recite at our graduation at our school. I don't know about everybody else, but entering this field lets you and I both do the part of making aviation a safer place. I hope this was helpful. Happy studying.